Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be talking about uh, how you should go about hiring uh, a specialist to run your Facebook ad. And before we talk about that, I want to talk about why that's really, really important. Because I've, uh, you know, I generally, uh, you know, we uh, here at Hubly, what we do, um, we're very opinionated. Uh, we do a lot of research about what works and what doesn't work. Uh, we believe that at, at, as it is today, with the, with the potential opportunities for schools uh, to market different strategies that, that Montessori schools can use to market um, for enrollment purposes, uh, there is no better platform than Facebook uh, uh, to, to use your limited marketing dollars in the most efficient way possible. Um, the thing is, though, that um, you have to make sure you're working with an expert because as much as Facebook is really the best place for you to for you to market to you know engage the the demographic of the potential parents that are a good fit for your school it's equally uh, a place uh, it's equally good at wait at, at wasting your money um, if you don't know how to use it. I mean, it's a very, very powerful platform and with, with, those, with all of the features it has, it makes it much more complex and really easy to, you know, when you're setting up your campaign, you, you click one button, you, you choose one setting the wrong way and it totally uh, kills all of its performance. So you spend money and get no value out of it whatsoever. So you really have to make sure this is very, very critical that you're working with somebody that really knows how to use that system. So um, the hardest part about, um, about, about using Facebook ads and knowing how to do it, and the thing that really takes the hours and hours and hours of testing and learning and, and the experience is, is the process of testing and understanding how to go about testing a campaign so that over time it generates more and more inquiries for less and less cost. There's many different uh, variables that you, can, that you can test and you need to test them all but you also have to understand how to go about doing that. And um, it, it gets a little bit more complex when you add in the, 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 the variable of a limited budget and most Montessori schools have to work with a very limited marketing budget. So, it makes, it makes all of that much more sensitive. And it's really important to understand that, um, that when you're testing, uh, there's three main components to test. One is the creative. What does the ad say? How does it look? Is there a video? Is it a picture? Um, so you want to test that. You also want to test the, the targeting strategy. And there's, there's a number of ways that you can target um, Facebook users, right? So of course you're going to be looking at, you're going to be looking to target people in your area. You're going to, you know, you're going to maybe target them by gender, by age, by interest, by connections. There's, uh, there's a very long list of ways you can target people demographically. And, um, there's also, uh, there's also some knowledge you have to have in regards to how much you should or should not target. So, and that depends. That's, that's a different thing for every school in every area because, because a lot of it has to do with the population size and the proportion of women as opposed to men. And so somebody really has to know what they're doing and they have to know there's, there's a number of standard kind of basic best practices that you have to know. And then you also have to know how to apply them in different scenarios. So it takes some time to learn and it's really, really easy um, to just throw some ads that look nice on Facebook and start running them and think you're targeting well and literally get zero inquiries or any value out of it whatsoever. While at the same time, if it's done right, it can, you know, the same, the same campaign can, can generate the most inquiries for the lowest cost. Um, so it's, it's something that you want to make sure you've got an expert running. Um, so, so how do you go about finding one? Well, um, th there's one thing I would suggest is do not, do not rely on parent volunteers. Um, 
I've talked about this in other modules. Parent volunteers are wonderful uh, and they really can know what they're doing. Uh, but I spend my day, every day, talking to at least one school a day that's in a position of real trouble because they were relying on very well-intentioned and very knowledgeable parent volunteers. But, but when you're relying on parent volunteers to grow uh, the school enrollment and you, you put all your eggs in that basket, you're putting uh, an irresponsible amount of, uh, uh, I would say, importance or responsibility into somebody that's, that's not, um, that's not, that should not actually be responsible. So if you're going to work with somebody, you need to make sure that you are paying a professional who has a professional relationship with you, who has a contract with you, and who, who, is, uh, who, is, who is going to work with you regardless of whether they have kids in your school or not. Um, that's one thing. <clears throat> Secondly, you want to make sure you're working with somebody that understands, um, understands what you need. There are, there are agencies out there that that have experience helping, helping schools, small private schools or specifically Montessori schools. You want to work with somebody that has that experience because if you don't, um, you might find a, a local you know, Facebook ad agency or another one that, that's really good or a freelancer or a consultant that are very, very good. Um, but at the same time, you're going to be spending money on their learning path. So if they haven't worked with this industry before, they're going to have to figure it out and they're going to need to spend your money to figure it out. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because that's, that, that is them delivering value to you because if they are going to run the campaign, then they do need to figure it out. Um, the only thing is you can avoid that. You can avoid having to spend money on, you know, so like as an example, you know, for our team at Hubbly, you know, we, we run Facebook enrollment campaigns for, you know, for Montessori schools and that's all we do. So uh, we understand the market, we, we, we know what works for, you know, like sort of common best practices for all Montessori schools and, and we, we can spin up a campaign with all of that pre-built with all that understanding. Um, and, and so that kind of, so our customers get to skip over that you know that initial learning phase and they don't have to waste money doing it so that's that's not always the scenario um, and you just want to try to avoid having to pay for the learning phase if you can if you can't if you've got somebody that you want to work with and uh, you're convinced that they're the right fit and that they're going to do a great job then then it is worthwhile if they are a proven expert it is worthwhile to invest in that learning phase, but if you can avoid it, I would suggest, uh, I would suggest doing so. Um, <clears throat> aside from that, um, one thing that I want to prepare you for um, is to understand that when you are in, uh, you know, building a campaign, generally speaking, they, they'll start to generate inquiries right out of the gate, okay? So, so you're going to get some, some, some type of value out of it. Um, but what you're trying to do is create a campaign that, you know, again, is optimized and generates the, the most amount of inquiries of the ideal fit parents for the lowest cost per inquiry. That is the metric of success for an enrollment campaign. So it takes some time to get to that point where, you know, so you start running, so I'll give you an example. There's a school we were working with and when we first launched their campaign, we ran about 36 ads and it, was, it generated, uh, in the first month, it generated only six inquiries for a cost of $42 each. But, um, but that's what you have to do. You have to run a number of ads and you never know which ones are going to work or not work. So that's why you have to run a number of ads. And then after that, we start getting into testing the targeting. So first we test the creative, what ads get the most engagement, and then we want to test the targeting. Uh, so there's a, a number of ways you can target, and targeting is very, very sensitive, and it's the most, again, it's the most powerful part of the Facebook platform, um, but it's a very sensitive, so you know, one small change can completely kill the campaign. So sometimes 
though, sometimes you, ha you, you do have to kind of break the campaign. So, so with this particular school, um, when we started testing targeting, uh, it, was, it was kind of hard to determine what was or wasn't going to work. So we had a hypothesis and we tested it. And for the next month, it got zero inquiries. So the school was spending money on running these ads and it got zero inquiries while we were testing the targeting. So uh, that might sound like a really bad thing, but the reality is, is that once we determined, because we, we, we were able to go through that process of elimination and understand what was not working, that allowed us, I mean, that clarified what was working, what would work the best. So when we then moved on to testing the landing page, so we found what targeting strategy works and we moved into testing the landing page, for the next, the next month, uh, we were able to improve the overall performance of the campaign by over 400%. So it went from originally generating inquiries for $42 each to generating inquiries for under $10, just under $10 each. So that's an improvement of 400%. And that cost the school in total $1,000. So they spent $1,000 over a three month period while we were testing the ads. And uh, now, so they got a number of inquiries while that was happening. I think they got somewhere around 40 inquiries through that process. But now they also have a campaign that they can turn on at any point and it will generate inquiries for $10 each. So that's, a, that's, a, that's an asset that the school has to use whenever they need to generate inquiries. So, so the reason why I talk about this is because it's important for, you, for your expectations to be set correctly. Um, you should not go into a marketing strategy, uh, even if you're investing in an expert, expecting it to just you know, be a magic bullet to work on day one. It'll start to work and it'll go up and down, but that's, so that up and down might seem like, a, like, uh, like somebody's failing, but that is, that, is, that is the process of elimination. That up and down in performance is what is necessary to understand what works best. And, um, and so a couple of pointers going in, uh, definitely want to make sure just to summarize that you use Facebook ads, that you use an expert, you work with an expert to run those Facebook ads and that you go into, uh, you go into the whole exercise with the expectation that, you know, you're, you are investing, um, into building a strategy that will pay dividends, you know, f for, for long in the future and that, that you understand that it's going to take one, two, maybe even three months to get this campaign working uh, in the most optimal way uh, so that you have an asset that basically is a hands-free self-driving car. You just have to turn it on and it will always generate inquiries and that's what you should be shooting for and that's what every Montessori school should have. Uh, any Montessori school that is not, uh, you know, just, you know, full with a waiting list uh, some schools are still in that position, but it's much more rare today. Uh, so if you're like the average school, you do have to think about marketing and you have to make sure you have a marketing system and a marketing strategy that you can just f turn on and it'll drive like a self-driving car and pop out inquiries at the other end. <laughs>